Omega Shenron will be coming out really soon on Dokkan Battle, the global version. So I wanted to kind of make this video to kind of talk about, you know, optimal team choices or really good team choices for an Omega Shenron team. Because when I posted my video last week and I was talking about, hey, should you summon for Omega Shenron, which, you know, pretty much the conclusion comes down to, yes, you should, regardless of what you feel about Super Saiyan 4s. Because l let me just break something down for you really quick. Um, a lot of people are like, hey, I will, or maybe I'll wait till the Rosé banner because he's going to be on that banner most likely, you know, if Global doesn't change things up. We've seen them do it before, but I digress, um, you know, and that's fine. You know, they're summoning for Omega, and I just, my main point was to make sure that Omega did not get overlooked like he did when he came to Japan. A lot of us were like, hey, he's not that good, or he's just kind of average because he's just a jack-of-all-trades kind of guy. Now, that being said, a lot of people are like, not very many, but, you know, enough of them to catch my attention were saying, hey, I'm going to wait for Super Saiyan 4s because Super Saiyan 4s broke the game. That mindset, I understand if you're a free-to-play player, you know, and you have to manage your stones, that's fine. Um, I'm not telling you not to do that, but that mindset will get you burned. Here's why, because Global, despite what you may think, Global is not catching up to Japan. They've always been three, four months back, and they'll continue to be that. You know, they put things in out of order, but they put things in later. Like, the story came later than it did on Japan, the second iteration of the story, so on and so forth. And But their tournament is, like, really far ahead because Japan skipped a month, Global jumps month. It's, like, weird what they're doing over there. So that being said, you know, you'll always be in the situation where, like, oh, well, Super Saiyan 4 has come out on Global, but Japan just got something even better, so you're going to want to wait for that. So just summon for Omega and get it over with because he's really good. Now, let's get into the team building. Hope you enjoyed today's video. Subscribe if you're new. And yeah, so the main reason I wanted to do this is because people were saying, hey, I'm going to summon for Omega because I have a really good STR team. I'm running stuff like this. Let me show you. They're like, I'm running Gogeta. Um, forgive me if it's a little laggy. My internet is not very good in the situation I'm in now. I have Super Saiyan 3 Vegeta as well. And they were saying, like, I have this Goku, but, you know, the, the Awakened one, where is he at? Uh, he's in here. I can't see him. Oh, there he is. They're like, I have this guy too, and, you know, Super Saiyan God, and Trunks, and or stuff like this, right? To where, obviously, they share some links, um, but there's one common theme here, right? There's nice over in a flash across the board, uh, prepare for battles in there too, with Goku, um, Gogeta, and Trunks, and Trunks has a nice passive. So, all intents and purposes, this looks like a really solid STR team on paper, but what I will say is that you're hurting your captain of the team. If you look at this, he doesn't link with Trunks. I mean, Trunks will give him that passive, so it doesn't really particularly matter. He doesn't link with anybody for any sort of key link except for the god Goku, which is shocking speed. Now, that's a cool team, but, you know, Omega's one of the hardest hitters on the team, so you wouldn't want to relegate him to being just a supporting unit because he can do that. I mean, his passive, 30% down to all enemies attack, it's really good. It helps everybody else on the field, but, you know, you don't want to basically just screw over Omega that way. Let me show you a more optimal version of a STR team. Um, and I'm, I'm sticking to Global's database. Now, I don't know if, like, for example, O'Reilly's in here. I don't know if that means she's coming. Super Pycon's in here. I don't know if that means he's coming. Wh whatever the case is. But I'll stick to this database. Let me show you, like, a more optimal team version in which you build around Omega and Gogeta. So right off the bat with these three. Now, let me, let me say this, too. This is just if you have these cards. Obviously, if you don't have these cards, man, then... You know, you've got to improvise where you can. I'm just showing you an optimal team. That doesn't mean that everybody has the best cars or I think everybody can, can match teams like that. It's just me giving you an, an option as far as this goes. So you off the bat, right, you have over to flash, prepare for battle, and Super Saiyan between these two and Shocking Speed here. And then Fierce Battle, which is, you know, a universal link, so that's good because this guy doesn't offer that, but at the least he does offer the Shocking Speed to Omega. So off the bat... Those three is a really good trio to have. Now, from there, you can move into a little bit more option here. Um, I personally like to throw in Omega Shenron, or excuse me, um, Rildo, because him and Omega Shenron get along really well because Rildo's defense gets to about 22k, 23k, something in that vicinity. And then Omega, with his passive to lower enemies attack by 30%, they basically fit really, really well together. And then Rildo also lowers attack of the enemy, so you have a really good defensive nucleus to where you don't need this stunner, tanker, Vegeta. You, just, you don't need him uh, because Rildo fills that void. Now, from there, what I like to do, and Cell is a really good option too, but Cell's not available yet. He'll come out on Global, you know, probably like a month, month and a half, two months after uh, Omega and Shenron, probably closer to two months, you know. But it is nice to fuse in some more GT here for Omega to get some more key. And one of the best units to do that is the Goku, the Super Saiyan 3 GT Kid Goku that just got an Awakening on JP. So 
obviously, you look at him now, he doesn't offer Fierce Battle, but he will. He will offer Fierce Battle, which is another link he shares with Omega. GT is a key link, so that stretches across, in which these two already share a couple of key, di- key links in Fear and Faith. Big Bad Bosses, which is a nice buff, you know, but situational on this team. Uh, at best, and then GT, if you're in faith, GT there, over in a flash across the board, and Super Saiyan with these two, so you start to basically shape a team that has key going across the board, which I've said several times in this video, there's always that one thing I say, hashtag across the board, but there's always that one thing I say, now, to kind of fill out the, the team here, you have several options, it just kind of honestly depends on what you have, right, because you can put in somebody like this Roshi, who has over in a flash, who also has a high chance, it's not a guarantee, but it's better than nothing, at providing his allies with 20% attack, I believe, unless that's just for him, but at the very least, he does give them two key, and that over in a flash on him can be clutch when it comes across to these guys here, and then if he spawns with Omega or Rildo, he can also give them two key, situationally, I think it's like a 70% chance or something of that vicinity, um, like I said, Super Pycon's not out yet, but when he does come, he becomes a good option for the Shocking Speed. Unfortunately, Shocking Speed doesn't stretch across with Gogeta and Goku here. But if you wanted to build more of a Shocking Speed-oriented team, a really sneaky good option would be to throw in this Beerus. Because this Beerus gets really powerful. Like at Super Attack 10, I, I assume. Because I mine at Super Attack 8. I'll give you the vicinity for mine at Super Attack 8. On an Omega Shenron-led team, this guy... And obviously, there's too many characters here. But on an Omega Shenron-led team, this guy basically foils out 700 800k on a physical type unit when his passive goes off with a high chance so high chance means it's going to happen majority of the time at least half of the time so unless you're just flat out unlucky which could suck but you know uh he he will hit really well or really hard and he does have fierce battle and shocking speed so that does stretch across as you see beerus shares godly power even with this goku so it works really well there, and he does have shocking speed with uh, Super Pycon, and Super Pycon actually is a really good option, but I, like I said, I don't know if he's coming, so I don't really want to count him as you see his his passive and all that stuff there. He greatly lowers the enemy's attack. He gets 10,000 more attack on a super. Uh, when well, he's fighting one enemy, I mean, he has good links, so I'm going to take him out, though, because I don't know if and or when he's coming to global. Now, you know, from there, you do have a few other options, just if you wanted to make it more of a villain based team to kind of capitalize more on big bad bosses because my whole thing here is i wanted to show you guys a good way to build a team around your two captains basically omega and gogeta gogeta does hit harder on this team but omega has more value to the team be, you know being the leader for one and then also giving them that defensive uh versatility there um so, like I said, you can draw, go a little bit more defensive. Um, this is probably, in my opinion, some the best the best team you can run on this. I would. Mm, it it kind of comes down to what you want to do, um, because you have one too many characters here. I, you can drop Beerus, you can drop Super Saiyan God. I, I wouldn't really. I think this is pretty much the best team. Wait, no, no, no. The, actually, that is six characters. So yeah, something like this just in general, would work really well across because you have enough key links to sustain. You have the two leaders. You're going to have two Omegas, so you obviously want to have a little bit more of the links with him, and all these guys link with him for key. So this is probably the best team that you'd be able to push out. It, it just comes down to what you want to do. And another sneaky good option when he gets his rebirth will be Majub. Majub, actually, you know, he was a meme for so long in the community, but he becomes really valuable um, after his Dokkan Awakening, which is obviously not on Global yet. So just... Keep an open mind when it comes to this. Like I said, Cell will come out, and then when Cell comes out, you know, and, and then, um, you know, you get a little bit more option there in which I would probably want something like this. You can drop, just for shits and giggles, I'll just drop uh, Gogeta, which, God, I know that's going to piss some people off, even though I'm joking. Um, where's where's the Cell at? Where, where's Cell? Where's Cellu? Cell, Cell. I know he's in here. I'm just being blind. Uh, his links don't change, but can I, like, do that oh so they have the ssr cell in here but not the other cell i wasn't blind either way this cell has very good links there he has revival shocking speed messenger from the future which is not very good but he has kamehameha big bad bosses and he gets fierce battle so he links really well across the board he also supers at 10 key 11 key and 12 key so he's another unit to pull for now that's pretty much it i just hope you guys get <laughs> Excuse me. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video nonetheless. Subscribe if you're new. I just wanted to spread awareness for this because I didn't want you guys running full Super Saiyan teams and just completely shafting Omega on your team. I just wanted to spread some awareness. You know, you can throw in Pan here. You can throw in this 18 for key support. Pan has GT, which is really valuable. You know, it just 
come down it just comes down to what you like on the team and then obviously a lot of these units will get awakenings later on in the game and globals version because we have them on G on JP even the Super Saiyan 3 Vegeta here who I did not mention who does have GT okay he's actually a really good option he comes out with Omega too so pretty much that's it hope you guys enjoyed today's video nonetheless subscribe if you're new and yeah I'll catch you guys later thanks for tuning in peace